Hello friends, how are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you and your families are safe and healthy. In this video, we're going to talk about pods, chords and stops, which are such important elements in minimal and micro house music. I waited a while before doing this video because I wanted to have uh, good examples from my tracks. And also I needed to experiment a little bit more with the techniques to make these kind of sounds. But finally, I think I have enough stuff to share. So let's get started. During this time of experimentation, I came up with the idea that the good pod is mainly made of three important elements. The first one are the chords that you play, the second one is the sound that you choose, and the third one is the modulation on the sound, which is key to keep your pods moving and interesting. Speaking of chords, I usually tend not to use simple minor or major chords, but I like to try different variations of the chord, like the 6th, the 7th, the 9th and the 11th, uh, which sound richer than a simple minor or major chord. Also, I like to take out the third of the chord, which is the grade that makes the chord minor or major. So if you take it out, you have something which is more undefined and some, sometimes it's good on pods, pods to have these chords that uh, are neither major or minor. And for example, if you take the D, it could be the D major or D minor with the third. This is the third. If you take it out, you have a simple D fifth. You could add the sixth or the seventh. Also, there, there is a particular category of chords which are called suspended chords. And in this chords, you substitute the third with the fourth. So you have the D suspended fourth which is really nice, and this sixth, suspended fourth, and so on. So these, <clears throat> sorry, these are basically the chords that I like to play. A very interesting tool that you could use to help yourself when making chords, when choosing chords, it's this plugin, which is called Scalar. Scalar is an, a super uh, interesting plugin because if you don't know very much about chords, it really helps you, mainly for two important tools. The first one is that whatever key you play, he always tells you which chord you're making. So for example, this is a D major, but this is a D minor, D minor add 11th and so on. D minor 6th, 11th. So it's really nice to learn uh, chords, their names, what, what you're doing. And also, whenever you, you know the scale, the key you're in and the scale, you just select the scale, for example. So I want a C major scale, but you can also select here the root note and then the type of, of scale. So the menu got simplified. You select the scale and and then here you have all the basic chords and also all the variations. So um, it's really simple to find chords. You can audition them and then take the, the chord and you drag and drop on your MIDI track and that's it. So that's a really interesting tool to help yourself for chords. So that's basically all for chords. You had to know the key of the track, you had to know the scale that you want, if you want a minor or major scale, or all the variation on these two basic scales. And then if you know the theory about chords, you can choose the right chords. If you don't know, there's this plugin by Plugin Boutique Scales, which can really help you find out good, good, chord, pro, pro, uh, good chord progressions. The second important element is true in any case, not just for pods, and it's the sound you choose. I prefer to use the sounds from two plugins, they are both from Arturia, the Prophet and the Jupiter, but if you don't have any Arturia's plugin, you can use the analog from Ableton, or if you're in Logic, you have a lot of nice uh, presets from the library. I always start from presets, then maybe I change something on the sound, but I stopped trying to make my sounds from scratch, because at Arturia there are guys and girls who are 
way better than me at making patches that sounds good. So I always find sounds that I like in the presets. Last but not least, we have modulation, which can be defined the cherry on the pie uh, or on the pod. <laughs> this is so bad. You know, modulation makes your pod makes your pod moving, makes your pod interesting. In my case, modulation is a simple low pass filter, which cutoff can be controlled in many ways. For example, automations or a Max for Live plugin, a Max for Live device, as we will see in the example. So now I think it's time to hear some sound. So let's go to the examples. Uh, before starting with the examples, I need to remind you that I have an Instagram where I post a lot of uh, studio session stories or uh, behind the scenes of my video or um, some leak on the future videos. Um, so if you want to stay updated, just follow me on Instagram. And also, YouTube is my main platform, so that will even more appreciated if you subscribe to the channel. And if you want to stay updated when a new video comes out, you want to be notified, you hit the notification bell. Okay, so first example is from a, a track that is not out yet, but you have already heard it in my mastering tutorial. So let's check the pod in the track, in the main part, before the drop. Okay, so uh, this part is made of two lines. The first one. And the second one. So it's like a, a, a question and an answer in my head. It's like this. So let's first talk about the preset that I choose before because that explains a little bit the course then. So the, the preset is the same for both the lines. It's the fifth Prita preset from the Prophet, the Arturias Prophet. I just uh, adjusted a little bit this uh, section, the filter section and the amplifier section, which is also automated. The particular thing about this preset is that you have already a fifth chord set because the frequency of the, of the oscillator B is set to zero, so the root note, and the oscillator A is set to minus five semitones. So basically you, always, you are always playing a fifth chord just by playing one key. Then let's take a look at the chord. So the chord that I did is a C and a D sharp. So thinking that every note has its fifth played also, when I press the C, I am playing both a C and a G, which is its fifth. And when I'm pressing the D sharp, I'm playing both a D sharp and I, uh, this is, um, sorry, an A sharp. So those two notes together with their fifth are forming a minor seventh chord. Take a look. I have the C. I have its fifth, which is a G. Then I have the D sharp. This is a C minor. And the fifth of the D sharp, which is the A sharp. Sorry. And this is a, so here you can see the notes. C, D sharp, G, and A sharp. And this is a C minor seventh, which is pretty cool. And that's it for the chord. And then we have all the modulations. So the modulation, as I told you before, is a modulation on the filter. I have both a modulation on the filter cutoff of the 
profit and of the auto filter that I applied later. Uh, also, I have an EQ8, but this is just for EQ import purpose, and a DLFO2, which it's a control on the volume of the sound. But what makes the main uh, automation on the sound is the shaper, which is a uh, device for Max for Live, and the shaper is both applied on the first on the first line of pod and on the second line. Also, on both sounds, I have a chorus and some EQ. Then I grouped them and I added also a saturation and applied the 1176 uh, 11, by Waves, which is just a, a compressor. I'll explain a little bit how the shaper works. It's basically um, a plugin that keeps going on at the same rate, which is decided by this knob. Then you have the shape which you can adjust at your taste. So it's basically behaving like an ADSR uh, envelope. And as you can see, the filter moves like this waveform moves and the shape is given by this shape here that you can draw at your taste. Also another important thing is the depth. So how much the shaper is moving the auto filter cutoff frequency. So just a little bit or a lot, you can decide. The offset is the position, is where you set the maximum level of the parameter that you're modulating. And so what took me more time is to setting the rate and the phase to have that the filter worked precisely when the chord was starting, so in this point. Also, you can see that I have automations on the profits as well, so on the cutoff, on the envelope release, on the envelope sustain, and on the envelope decay, but that's just something to have a shorter sound after the drop. So the filter here uh, rises up and also the offset here rises up. So as you can see this line is moving up. And the same as done here, but here was a little bit um, harder because this sound is behaving a little bit in a weird way. So I have some automation here as well on the depth because I wanted to reduce the amount of movement created by the filter, so I reduced the depth. That's it, so let's go to, this, to the next example. Example number two, this will be quicker. Here I basically have two pods. The first one, which is more like a chord that happens sometimes. This is made with profit, same preset. And there's an automation on the filter, so when the chord starts, there's this complex automation. I resampled this part. I took a little piece and it keeps repeating, but there's this piece is different from this one. It's changing through the track, so that that helps to create a little bit of variation. Then on this sound, I applied my shaper. In this case, it was very simple because the, it doesn't have to move in a particular way. I just wanted to have a moving filter up and down, so uh, the shaper is set in a really simple way. Next example, which is, I think, another interesting example because it's uh, an example about creating stubs, chord stubs, more than a pod, and this could be interesting. Okay, for this track, uh, we have two pods. The first one is a classic pod, the second one is more like a chord stub. 
the bass line is mainly moving from a F scale to a G scale. So um, the chords that I choose are two chords, which are two D chords. The first one, this one is a D, a, a D minor seventh, while the second one is a D sixth sustained fourth. So uh, they are two D chords, but the sound of these chords is really close to the sound of a F and a G chord. Inside these two chords, there's an F on the first one and a G on the second one. So they are they fit really good with the bass line. And this is the main part. So this for the chord, for the sound, I use the Jupiter. The preset is the first one that you find when you open the plugin. So Astro Voices and I just moved a little bit this uh, envelope parameters. The stops are a little bit trickier to make because I started with a chord, then I resampled it, and then I put the chord inside uh, a sampler. So let's do it together from scratch. So I take the first chord. Okay, so let's create a long one. And then here I have a filter, which is moving. Uh, I've already something here. Then I create an audio track. Cool. Then I create another MIDI track and I drag and drop the waveform into the MIDI track. So it opens up a simpler. The key part is to take a modulating plugin. In this case, I'm using this plugin from Max for Li from Max for Live Survey. This plugin is only twenty dollars. In this plugin, you can say um, the number of stages of modulating stages and the number of channels. In this case, I want just one channel, and I want to modulate the starting point of this recording. Okay, so stop mapping. Now I go inside in the stage view. So these are all the stages and I set them to random or I can set them on an increasing wave. Maybe this is better so I, I can go through all the parts. And I start the sequencer which is on 16th and also reset off and random playback. So now every time that I that I press a chord, that I press a note, the chord is played but in a different point of the waveform, so with a different cutoff setting from the recording that I did before. And this creates this super nice stub. You can also uh, tweak a little bit uh, the attack, so it's softer and increase a little bit the, re the, the release time. And now that's basically it. So I, I did the same thing for this chord, for, for the second one. So let's check how this sounds. And then on the group I applied another auto filter with the shaper, so it gives a little bit more uh, variation. Also I'm using this filter mode, the SMP, which is really good because it has a drive which is really powerful and it looks like you're applying saturation to the clip. It's really nice and then I have a grain delay with uh, an automation so I can switch it on and off whenever I want and the time of the grain delay is connected to this LFO so it's variating and it's really nice to create something, some variation as well. Also before the drop. That's it. This 
for sure needs to be fixed in some part, but this is a good way to to make chord stops. So you, you take your chord in MIDI, you record it to audio with a filter that opens and close, closes, and then uh, you take the recording and you put it on a, a simpler, and then you take a device that is that can be mapped to the starting point of the of the sample. For example, this uh, survey is really cool because it's a step sequencer. It chains by step and with this random way, it moves uh, from the beginning to the end uh, in a random way and this is really cool. Experiment uh, with some other sounds, you will come up for sure with good things, good things. Nice, so we're done for today. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, I hope it was interesting. If there's something which wasn't clear, please ask in the comment. Also, let me know what you think of the video. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. You'll find the link to the things that I used in the video in the description. For example, the plugin, the link to the scaler, the link to the survey. Uh, if, the, if there's anything else you wanna know, uh, just ask me. And and I see you in the next one. Be safe, stay home, and stay healthy. Cheers, guys. Ciao.